mostly we have heard about the tragedy that has come of the Heron family. I don't know if you know the Heron family, they sat right over in that side. Uh, three weeks ago, the father passed away from COVID. And then a little less than, a little more than two weeks ago, uh, the wife passed away. And now uh, the daughter passed away. happen, we know that God knows. We know that God knows. But I do know that God is in charge. Yes. God is in charge. Hallelujah. And he's taking care of us day by day. I want to say this. I'm not going to get into the details. But you have to pay attention to the book and God's will. Amen. This book is called the Word of God, but it's also the will of God. If you're searching in your life to find out what you should be doing or what's right and wrong, it's in the book. That's right. It's in the book. And it's pretty simple. Pretty simple. It's in the book. And you can't do anything outside the book and have God bless you. It doesn't work. It does not work. And uh, I just want to add that so you understand. God cannot bless sin. He can't do it. And he won't do it. And matter of fact, he'll come around to putting an end to sin. He won't do it. So, I know I'm not being uh, explaining the whole situation and God doesn't want me to right now. But I want to say that we're praying for them. Continue to pray for that family. There's uh, three left. There's, there's more. There's more. There's some in Carolina, but uh, right around here, I think we've got two and then maybe three. I'm not sure where Patricia lives. And uh, anyway, God knows and God's going to reach down. But when you make a choice not to listen to what the book says, you will end up paying a price. Now here's the thing that stumps a lot of Christians, makes them confused. They see the world doing certain things and getting away with it. It looks like they're getting away with it. But when you're in the body of Christ, you can never emulate the world. They're doing it so I can do it. Don't you ever think that thought. Throw that out of your mind before it even gets in there. You can't do what everybody else does. You can't do it. Why? You're, you're different. You've been bought with a price. Amen. You've been bought and paid for. Amen. And you are the people of God. And so you're not going to live like the world. You're not going to live like the world. You're going to live different. And uh, this is where Christians think, well, they're getting away with it. How come I? You can't. You will get judged quicker and faster than the world. The world is going to be judged. They will always be judged. But you can't get away with what the world does. You don't even think that way. You'll be destroyed. So, whenever you think, I can, if they're doing I can do, don't ever think that. Don't ever have that in your mind. Because that will cause you to, to be destroyed. God will take note of what's going on. He wants you to live with the book. With the book. And your greatest desire and your greatest dreams have to be serving God. Has to be to serve God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So there's a price to pay. I had a good sermon from Brother Manny yesterday. And uh, we thank God for that. That was the first sermon I ever preached in Zion Gospel Temple. Not as a preacher but as a student in the homiletics class back in 1971, amen. I preached that sermon, the still small voice, amen. The still small voice, thank you, Lord. But <clears throat> you can never, God will, God will never treat you like the world. Do you want to be treated like the world? I don't. Because the world's going to be destroyed. Okay? Now, God cleans up his crowd first 
before judgment comes. This is the way it works. Part of what's going on in the world is partially judgment. This is a sickness. People are dying from sickness, but there's a big judgment going on. There is. And so you've got to be careful. If you want God to treat you different than the world, you've got to live different according to the book. You have to. You've got no choice. You're either going to be different or you're going to be treated like the world. That's all. Amen. That's the book. That's the book. So, thank you, Lord. He loves us. Does this mean God's man? No. It means he loves us. Sometimes he takes us off the earth so we don't have to go down below. Okay? God has that option. He has all kinds of options. He does. Our only option is to live for him. That's it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise God. Father, as we get into your word today, have your way in our lives. Open up Psalm 91 in a real way to us. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Psalm 91. Glory to God. Psalm talks about security. How many want to be secure? Amen. Now, security is normally explained to us in terms of financial well-being. That's the way they explain it to us. But the truth is, that really doesn't have too much to do with your security. It's God. And it's all about God. That's your security. Amen. Amen. Being secure. Dwelling. Another point is where do you dwell? Where do you live? And he uses this verse in verse 1. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. All right? Right off. I love this about the book. The Bible says it right. Boom. Right in the beginning. No big explanation. It just speaks it. <clears throat> one of the biggest decisions you'll ever make in your life, you might make it a couple of times, is where am I going to live? Where am I going to dwell? Where am I going to dwell? And if you're buying a house, you're buying a house, you begin to drive around certain areas and look things over. Come on, that's what everybody does. I think I like this neighborhood, I'm not sure about that one, I like this, I like that. And People make choices to dwell in certain areas by what they see and what they look like and what they like. And this is the same thing. God is saying, if you want to have a good life and a secure life, dwell in my presence. Dwell with me. Dwell with me. Work with me. Sense my presence all the time. The beauty of serving God is that you know that God is with you. The biggest single situation, uh, problem that Jesus had at crucifixion was, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Rejection. He was dealing with rejection. He had never been rejected in his whole life. In, in, in all of eternity, and now he was on earth for a few short moments. God had to change and take his face away from Jesus. Why have you rejected me? And he was affected by it. But thank God that was lifted one, two, three. Amen. The Spirit of God came down and quickened his body and soul, and he was gone. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. He couldn't live with rejection only for a few seconds. Rejection. Okay. So God is saying to us, you want to dwell with me? You want to live with me? Learn how to do it. Learn how to live with me. Now I'm going to 
go off off the text or off the Bible here for a second. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures, then I'm going to make a few points. Uh, starting on Son, uh, 91 verse 1. <clears throat> he who dwells okay, in the shelter. Now notice, if you're dwelling with God, it's a shelter of the Most High. Now this revelation of the Most High, or this word, the Most High, El Elyon, a name for God, one of the Jewish names, the Hebrew names for God, El Elyon, Most High, comes all the way back in Genesis, goes all the way back in Genesis, and it's chapter 14 with Melchizedek. Melchizedek, priest of the Most High God. He had an understanding of God and they functioned in that understanding. They lived in that. And he was a powerful man. Abraham goes and has the war with the kings and destroys them. Destroys the kings. And he comes back and on the way back he passes Jerusalem. All of this went down in Jerusalem. Before Jerusalem became the city of the great king. This is before. Okay? And uh, Abraham comes through the area and Melchizedek goes out of the city and presents him with bread and wine. How many of you remember that story? Bread and wine for all the troops. He fed everybody. Fed the whole crowd. And it was a symbol of communion. Okay? A symbol of the Passover. All kinds of things. Many symbols here. But it was God speaking that in the beginning, out of this place, we're going to have a, a move. Things are going to change. So, all of a sudden, things began to change. Okay? And uh, God was showing them that if you really, really, really want to have peace, security, and you want to have shelter, emotional shelter, physical shelter, spiritual shelter. It's around me, it's in me, by me, near me. That's where peace is, say hallelujah. Okay, all right. All right, so notice, you can dwell, and God wants you to dwell, all right? In the shelter of the Most High. And as you abide there, as you abide in the shelter of the Most High, look what it says. Uh, you're going to meet. You're going to meet the Almighty. In other words, this is another Hebrew name for God. You're going to meet God on a higher level. That's what it means. Abraham came to Melchizedek. Melchizedek was over Abraham. It's hard to believe. It's hard to believe he was over Abraham spiritually. He was. Because you know how we know? Abraham paid tithes to him. That's how we know. Okay? So Abraham paid tithes to Melchizedek. Melchizedek blessed him. And then in the end, God gave Abraham a new, higher revelation, a big one, the Almighty. El, okay? El Shaddai. God, El is God, Shaddai is Almighty. God the Almighty. And that was, that was, to prove to him at an old age God could do anything. Could give them a child. Him and he and his wife, they were way past childbearing years. And God said, I'm God Almighty. I can do what I want to do. And he was looking for somebody like Abraham to believe, to go along with him. This is the great thing about serving God. All you gotta do is go along for the ride. That's all you gotta do. Just go along for the ride. Just agree with him. Believe his word and move with him. And then the miracles occur. Say hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. So, right in this verse, in one verse, we've got two names for God here. All right? The Most High God and God Almighty. Amen. And each of these people that were involved in this revelation all understood what it meant because they had seen God do something. They experienced God. The main thing is in your life, you experience God. 
but you have to be in the shelter of the Most High in order to experience the Almighty. Come on, get a hold of this now. You gotta be in the right place, you gotta be spiritually in God. You gotta walk in God. You gotta get up in the morning, you gotta think about God. You gotta be praying, you gotta be speaking in tongues. Now I wanna say this, God wants you to speak in tongues more now than you ever did in your whole life. Amen. Come on, get a hold of this. Just pray in tongues. Pray in tongues. Because the attacks of the enemy are coming on this church. They're coming on people. They don't understand it. Pray in tongues. Pray in the Spirit. It'll open you up. You'll understand what God is trying to say. Amen. As you pray in the Spirit. So don't be, don't be uh, embarrassed about praying. Just pray in the Spirit all the time. You know? I had a friend years ago. I've mentioned his name many times. Harold Bradison. He used to pray in the Spirit all the time. He was probably one of the first that I really began to see pray and walk and pray in the Spirit. And uh, people, even the body of Christ, they thought he was gone. You know, he's out of it. He's going around talking to himself. No, he's praying. He's praying. <laughs> he's praying. Amen. In the Spirit. After a while, in a while, God will reveal to you what the Spirit's saying. Because when you pray in the Spirit, it bypasses your mind, and you pray the absolute will of God. I don't pray your will. We're praying God's will. Come on. Put your hands up there. Amen. Amen. So, Getting back to the shelter of the Most High, you abide, you live in the shadow of the Almighty. That's where I want to be. I want to be in the shadow, in God's shadow of the Almighty. Say, thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. There are, there are things that will happen in your life that uh, you won't understand, and but God is in the Spirit's working in your life. Whether you understand it or you don't. I remember years ago where I was in Germany, I was in Berlin with a friend of mine who travels quite a bit, and we left the hotel and we went out and we got on the ring, it's called the Ring Road that goes around Berlin and then it takes you to the other autobahns, so all the different autobahns, you're going south, north, east, west. And uh, we got on the Ring Road and we were talking, we weren't really paying attention, I was looking for a certain exit and we could, we missed it. I said, I can't believe it, we missed it. Kept on going, it was about a 45 minute ride around the city again. We were going around, like 295, 395, 495, just keep going on and on and on. And we went around, and we missed it the second time. Missed it the second time. And I said, uh, Newman, we missed it. I can't believe it, we missed it again. We were just talking about God and what God was doing. And so he said, okay, forget this, we're going back to the hotel. So we, we went back and checked into the one we had just left two hours before that. Checked back in, and uh, he said to me, he said, uh, let's go, let's go and, and get a cup of coffee in the coffee shop in this fancy hotel. And he said, I know the guy that runs it. His name is, he's an Italian guy. His name is Mancini. So I said, all right, let's go get a cup of coffee from Mancini. So we went in there, we had to sit up at the bar, we were drinking our coffees. And uh, Mancini knew that Newman was, loved the Lord, and he started questioning him. And Newman started talking, and, um, uh, he said, you know, Mancini, the Italians were the first ones to be baptized in the Holy Spirit. And he tells him the story from the book of Acts. And uh, all Italians like that. It makes him feel good, you know, so. <laughs> he's, he's feeling good about himself. He says, yeah, you're telling me a story. He said, no, it's the Bible out, shows him. Then he really starts to laugh. He's laughing, he's laughing, he's laughing. And, um, Newman had a gifting to move right behind the Holy Ghost. So he grabs him, Mancini's behind the bar, 
we're drinking our coffees. He grabs him, pulls him in, and sticks his hand on his head. Just like that. Just like that. And he's speaking in tongues. The next thing he's the man saying, ba 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 la 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 ba ba la 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 ba ba And then he stops dead. He was laughing before that. And he goes, what's that? And the woman goes, that's the Holy Ghost. And then he started laughing again. Then he started talking in tongues again. He couldn't believe it. That's how fast God will move if you're moving with him. Just like that. Unbelievable. God will do all kinds of things. If you're ready to do it, he'll move. He'll take you on a trip you can't believe. Come on, lift your hands up. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Baptized in the Holy Spirit. Years later, years later, I was reading the New York Times on Sunday, and they used to do different stories about different places around the world. I don't read the Times. I haven't read them for a long time. I don't like the Times. So, uh, but they did a story on Mancini and the restaurant in Berlin. They did. Incredible. But God touched him right off, right out of the gate. Boom! What was it all about? We were in the spirit. Norman and I were talking about God, just riding around, letting God speak to us. We were in the spirit. And God moved. We were in the right place at the right time. We were in the shelter of the Most High. Say hallelujah. When you walk around and you're in the shelter of the Most High, you're going to see all kinds of things happen. Say hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're going to see all kinds of things happen in your life. The Most High. Thank you, Jesus. And then you will come and you will meet God Almighty. He'll take you to a place in your life where you are sure it can't be changed. And he'll change it. He'll change it. Come on, give the Lord a hand. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. God will bring change. Hallelujah. But you've got to dwell in the shelter. Now, now remember this. There is nothing better than being in the shelter of the Most High. There is no life better. The devil can't give you anything better than the shelter of the Most High. Come on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. All right, let's go down a few verses. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I will say to the Lord. Now, this is the third name of God, but I'm not going to get into it here. This is Jehovah. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress. You are my refuge and my fortress. My God in whom I trust. Three, it is he, it is he who delivers you from the snare of the trapper and from the deadly pestilence. Now look at the promises and look at the blessings. From the deadly pestilence, which is sickness, and the snare of the trapper, that's people trying to trip you up, trying to make you make a mistake. God will deliver you from all of that. Say hallelujah. All of that. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. I love verse 4. He will cover you. Or he will cover you with his pinions, that's his feathers. And under his wings, you may seek refuge. Hallelujah. His faithfulness is a shield and a bulwark. Let's go back to the first portion of that verse. He will cover you with his pinions, with his feathers, okay? And under his wings, you will seek refuge. There's only one place to seek refuge, the presence of God. Under his wings. God's got some big wings, he covers the whole world. <laughs> some big pinions, some big feathers. He's got you there for a reason and a purpose. I don't know if you've ever seen uh, baby chicks and a mother, and uh, five or six little chicks running around the barnyard or a pen, and the mother's there, and uh, 
if something frightens them, she'll spread their wings out a little bit. She'll puff them up. She'll put them up, and all the chicks will whoop, whoop, run right under the wings. Why? They feel secure there. Amen. And they are secure there. And that's what God is teaching us to do. When you've got a problem, get in the right place. Get under his wings. Come on. Get under his wings. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is so good. And God has made those positions in those places for us to run to. He's made a place for us to run to. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. God is so good. You're running, you're running, you're running. And where are you running to? Where God wants to position you, where you can feel secure. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Put your hands up and say, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God's got all of the places that you need to hide. He's already got them all figured out. Hallelujah. All the places that you're going to run to, he's got it all figured out. Say hallelujah. Come on. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You're going to have to learn how to turn the TV off and start just looking at the Word. Amen. He'll cover you with his pinions and feathers. Under his wings, you can seek refuge. Now, notice he says you may seek refuge. In other words, you don't have to, but you better. You see? You better seek your refuge under his wings. Not in your own brain, not in your own understanding, but under God. Yeah. All right. Verse 5. You will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day. How do you realize that Satan loves to terrorize the world at night when it's dark? He loves that. But we're not going to have that terror. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I never remember reading a story about a man by the name of Smith Wigglesworth. He's called the Apostle of Faith. If you don't have his books, go get them. Go get Smith Wigglesworth's books, okay? And uh, one day, he was in his house. He was fighting the devil all the time and because uh, he had a, a worldwide ministry. And... Uh, he heard some noise, and then something else came around, and then all of a sudden, the Spirit of God said, you know, it's the devil. And he said, ah, it's only the devil. I'm going back to bed. <laughs> it's the truth. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. God doesn't want you to be afraid of anything. Amen. He's got an answer for you everywhere. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. He uh, went through World War II in England, and they had a very hard time with the bombing. And uh, an evangelist went to see him, and he had a newspaper under his arm. And uh, before Smith Wigglesworth would bring him in the house, he grabbed the newspaper and he said, we don't believe in lies. And he took the newspaper, and he threw it across the street. He said, Hitler and Mussolini are both finished. That's it. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. Amen. And what he was saying is, be careful what you read and what you think about. Right. Don't let Satan put those crazy thoughts in your head. Right. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. So, security. God is giving us security. You will not, underline your Bible, not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the 6.30 news, you won't be afraid, okay? Or the arrow that flies by day, okay? The bullets, whatever. You won't be afraid of anything. It's a terrible thing to be full of fear. People don't want to get sick, but they're afraid if they go get, the, they do get an inoculation, that they will get sick. It's terrible. It's horrible. There's no, they, they don't see a, a, a reason to do anything. It's terrible. God, you won't be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day. Say thank you, Jesus. 
Hallelujah. No fear. No fear. Thank you, Jesus. No fear. Hallelujah. This goes along with this series of sermons I spoke against fear when the COVID first came in March 2020. I spoke seven weeks against fear. Against fear. Thank you, Jesus. And God's taking fear now. And he's taking the fear mongers, the people that peddle fear to control the nation. He's going to take them down too. Say hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Back to the book. Well, this is going to be longer than I thought. We're going to have to do it another week, it looks like. But anyway. <clears throat> You will not be afraid of the terror that by night, or the arrow that flies by day, or the pestilence, there it is. Pestilence is disease that stalks in darkness, or of the destruction that lays waste at noon. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. Hallelujah. My Lord, that's incredible. People are going to be dropping all over the place. We're not finished with pestilence. I'm not going to try to frighten you, that's for sure. But I'm just saying, they're not giving up on this. They're going to, they're going to keep their foot on the accelerator, and they're going to keep doing this more and more and more and more. Okay? You have to have God to survive. We have to have a revelation of how powerful God is in order to make it. you got to have faith. You gotta have it. Yes. We've never lived in a nation or a time in this nation like this. Thank God we've never had to go through it, but they've decided this is the time for one world order. That's what they've decided. But God's understanding, he's not, he's not confused by anything. Say thank you, Jesus. So God's people, he's gonna protect. Hallelujah, just thank the Lord, amen. amen. Hallelujah, glory to God. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. God is so good. Amen. And you're going to have to learn to pray the prayer of faith for people that need prayer. You're going to have to reach out and throw people lifelines. I can't make it. I want to die. No, you're going to get right in there and you're going to give them faith in the word of God. And you're going to give them a faith to reach the line and hold on to the line and, and grab life. Grab life. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God has us on the earth for this particular time. Say hallelujah. God doesn't make any mistakes at all. None. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. We make them. He doesn't. <clears throat> Glory to God. Another friend of mine was praying, and he really felt that uh, there was a problem with what God was doing. All of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to him and said, if there's a problem in this whole situation, it's on your end, not on mine. <laughs> and finally he woke up and said, yeah, God, I think you're right. It's on my end. It's not on your end. Amen. That's the deal. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All right. Back to the book. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not, not, approach you. You will only look on with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. <clears throat> That's a big thing. I want to say that. God wants you to see the recompense of the wicked. You know why? Because right now the wicked, it looks like they're getting away with everything. Come on. Yeah. Let's be honest. People are confused. It looks like they're getting away with everything. But God's going to bring a time around when you're going to see the wicked are going to get recompensed. Say hallelujah. In other words, what they sow, they're going to reap. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. I'm happy. I'll be happy to see that. Got to be careful. I can't be too happy because God doesn't want me to be too happy with other people's problems. But I'll be happy to know that they got recompensed. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. I'm getting happy just thinking about it. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Nine, for you have made.
made the Lord my refuge, even the Most High, the dwelling place. In other words, when you make God your dwelling place and the Spirit of God your refuge, all of these things will happen to you. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. That's the promise of God. That's God's promise. <clears throat> okay, 10. No evil will befall you, nor any plague come near your tent. That's incredibly powerful. That's incredibly powerful. No evil will befall you, and no plague. That's another plague, it's another sickness will come near your dwelling place. Why? God's going to have an angel looking over you. Say hallelujah. There are angels that have been assigned to you by God to take care of you. Now that only works when you stay in the right place at the right time. If you're in a place where you don't belong, you're not going to get covered. But when you're under the right covering and you're in the right area, you are protected. Say hallelujah. God is going to protect you. Not going to. He is already protecting you all the time. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. <clears throat> Glory to God. Amen. He will give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, in the New Testament, it's spoken to the promises like this. Okay? He will never leave you nor forsake you. And the he that Jesus is talking about is the Holy Spirit. Under the Old Covenant, God just put the angels in, in charge. But I want to say this. I've got to be careful what I say. If you really could see, you would see angels taking care of you. Say hallelujah. Put your hands up. But because God doesn't want us to get off the track and go nuts on angels, it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And it is. It's the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. And he, they've been put in charge of us to look after us. Amen. How many of you know you need God's help? at all times. Every day you get up, every morning you <clears throat> get ready to go to work, every time you get into the, the shower, you need God's help. You need God's protection. You need God to talk to you. Hallelujah, wherever you're at. You need God to help you in your business, to be successful. You need God to talk to you about how to make more money. If you need more money, God's going to show you how to do it. Amen. Come on. Thank you, Lord. Prosperity. God is in charge of all of that. And thank you, Jesus. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. Amen. All right? A couple more verses. We're going to be finished a little early here today. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Give his angels charge concerning you to guard you in all your ways. And they will bear you up in their hands that you do not strike your foot against the stone. Now that's more, more messianic, but <clears throat> it does work and God does do that. Lest we would hurt our feet, he is gonna bear us up and take us over the bumps. Say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna finish next week on this. This is good stuff. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Promises, the promises, the promises. We live on those promises. We live in that realm. You've got to learn how to live in the realm. Thank you, Jesus. You've got to learn how to walk in the Spirit. And you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, he says. You walk in the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Let's stand. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you to come forward. How do you come down to the front altar here? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, we're going to pray. We're going to ask God to keep us under the covering. Keep us in the presence. Thank you, Jesus. Watch over us. 
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Watch over us, Lord. You're promising to, but we're asking you to do it too. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We have things that we're going to face that we have no idea how we will do it, but God will take us through it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, we praise you. We praise you. We glorify you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. We praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Rabba Bandoria, Rabba Bandoria, Shantai. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Rabba Rabba Shantai.
yours forever. Hallelujah. Woo! How about Sunday? His mercy endures forever. Yes, it does. His mercy endures forever. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'll give thanks unto the Lord for His goodness to me. I'll give thanks unto the Lord for His goodness to me. For His mercy and glory for Watch over us as we go to our respective homes. Have your way in our lives. And let us take the joy of the Lord with us wherever we go. Amen. In Jesus' name.